हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम मोहन चंद जोशी असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर फ्रॉम जामिया मिलिया इस्लामिया टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट अ मॉड्यूल माइक्रोस्कोप बेस्ड इमेजिंग एंड एप्लीकेशन पार्ट सी अंडर पेपर जेनेटिक इंजीनियरिंग एंड रिकॉमेंड एंड टेक्नोलॉजी पार्ट वन बाय द एंड ऑफ दिस मॉड्यूल स्टूडेंट्स विल अंडरस्टैंड वट इज फ्लोस एंड बेड माइक्रोस्कोपी वट आर द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर बेस्ड दिस पर्टिकुलर माइक्रोस्कोपी Uh, there are three major uh, fluorescent based uh, variants of fluorescent imaging uh, one is wide field uh, confocal microscopy as well as two photon microscopy also we will discuss about the few applications that are very well used and very well known in the research area that is frap uh, fret and flen and in the end we'll try to summarize how fluorescent based imaging has enabled researchers to understand or address uh, different biological questions fluorescent based microscopy so the fundamental principle underlying the fluorescent based imaging is that we have a sample which is tagged with a fluorescent molecule which has a luminescence property that means that particular molecule can be excited when uh, absorbs a specific wavelength and reverts the ground state when the excitation light is removed and in that process it emits a light with a longer wavelength which can be captured now this particular method or this property is exploited by fluorescent microscope in which we tag our sample with specific luminescent molecules and uh, excite it with a specific wavelength and look at for the signal which we anticipate coming out from the sample Uh, unlike the light microscopy where it relies on absorbing that light uh, when it is passes through the specimen here we are looking at specifically the sig the signal or the wavelength which is emitted by the fluorescent molecules one of the major advantage of this particular technique is that uh, uh, it is used for imaging the uh, uh, not only imaging to get the special uh, special localization of the sample but also use uh, whether the the sample molecule or the molecule which we are looking at is diffusing within the diffusing at uh, constant at a specific rate or not and also we can figure out the interaction between two different molecules uh, whether they are interacting or not so what are the core principle that is uh, involved in fluorescence imaging or fluorescence based microscopic imaging it requires an luminescence molecule which has the capability to absorb energy and also emit uh, energy at a higher wavelength so for example in fluorescent based microscopy uh, molecules which which absorbs energy will go to a higher energy state and will remain there and will come back to a lower or uh, the ground state and during that process it emits it emits light and that's the window which is used by fluorescent based uh, microscopy because it looks at the that emitted uh, fluorescent light and captures it and by that it can also figure out where exactly that molecule is inside the cell or in the in the specimen one is looking for unlike light microscopy where there's a white light that is used because in a white light you have uh, all the seven uh, you have all the wavelength that are available but on the in the fluorescent based microscopy we further defragment that white light into a specific wavelength that we are interested in and then try to use that wavelength to excite our molecule of interest and then view it when it emits light when it returns to its ground state the major advantage of this technique over a uh, light microscopy is that first it provides the specificity and also gets very very localized uh, uh, we, we can target a very specific area which we are interested in and also it is very fast accurate in terms of its uh, spatial localization also will allow a researcher to understand if a molecule have uh, a, a diffusion capability means like if we are spotting a specific molecule at specific location whether it is diffusing so we can also figure out what is the diffusion coefficient so there in a, when a molecule has a brownian motion as well as if it is vibrating from one location to another so we can figure out within that parameter what is the diffusion coefficient of that particular molecule and also by labeling uh, two different molecules which we think whether they are interacting 
we want to test whether they are interacting or not and if we know they are already interacting we can visualize it by tagging two different molecules and then visualize it under the microscope to see that both the signals are coming from very close vicinity that means those proteins are interacting so these are few application that are also uh, done uh, using this method here's the schematic that how fluorescent imaging actually works so as i mentioned earlier suppose you have a luminescence molecule which is shown in blue here and is in the ground state once you have an excitation wavelength which is smaller uh, which which has uh, which is low wavelength but in high energy so what happens your molecules takes up that energy absorbs it and goes to a higher stage which is shown in 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 different uh, rows up here and this is the, the, uh, this entire reaction is very very quick as you can see by the time it takes from uh, ground state to the excited state it remains there and then it comes back to its ground state as the energy is removed the it has it has absorbed the energy now it is coming back and what happens in this case that you have loss of energy which results in a higher wavelength or the longer wavelength and this entire reaction is also very slow uh, it's, it's very fast I beg your pardon it's very fast and you gain see a signal coming out so the difference between the place uh, the wavelength has moved is also called uh, Stokes shift that is the point it is got excited to the point it has emitted the wavelength so that shift is called Stokes shift also and this entire reaction is very quick it it's actually happens in uh, 10 to the power minus uh, 10 to the power 12 seconds or very very quickly wild field microscopy or epifluorescent microscopy or uh, in general it's called fluorescent microscopy and as the name suggests wide field uh, microscopy in this the entire sample the wide area has been eliminated and as I mentioned in earlier slides also the, the core principle behind fluorescent microscopy is that you have a fluorescent molecule that is stacked with your sample now we need to excite that particular molecule to visualize it under a camera or you through our eyes so we need to provide it a wavelength through which it can be excited depending upon the fluorophore that we are using uh, we we know what exactly what exact wavelength we want so we have a mercury lamp or the arc lamp which produce the white light and as you can see in this picture you have a, a light source on the left hand side which throws a light and this light is diverted toward the sample by a dichroic mirror and this dichroic mirror is coupled with an uh, excitation filter so that excitation filter will allow passage of only that light which is going to be excite our fluorophore so we are by using different combination of uh, excitation filters we can excite the same sample with different wavelength depending upon the kind of fluorophores and the number of fluorophores that we have in our samples thereafter when the sample is getting illuminated the entire range in the the entire sample is getting illuminated by the specific wavelength of light what happens the fluorophore molecules get excited and then emits the light in the longer wavelength and now this wavelength can come back through the objective lens back to the dichroic mirror and now there is uh, with, the, with the mirror also we have a couple emission filter now the emission filter is very specific again it's a narrow bandwidth emission filter that means it will allow passage of only that wavelength which are longer than our excitation filter as well as it is a range which we can also select so in that way we can get very specific and also get rid of any out of focus or any other light which are beyond our uh, known spectra of fluorophore thereafter this entire image can be uh, can be captured by a uh, by a camera which is shown on top so this is the basic principle of white field microscopy where the entire sample is illuminated by using excitation and the emission filter we can uh, specifically get the localization of our fluorophore so in the fluorescent microscopy uh, as i said that fluorescent molecule is used which has a luminescence property and then uh, we get different colors or different uh, spectrum from these fluorophore and depending upon the wavelength range range we are looking at we have uh, perception we perceive light in different color for example uh, the wavelength range from 340 to 400 nanometer is a, is a range which is called ultraviolet UV region then 400 to 430 is a violet region where we see the violet light 430 to 465 is at is called blue 
465 to 500 is cyan 500 to 550 is a green color range 550 to 580 is a yellow color range and then 580 to 620 is orange 620 to 700 is red and 700 onward is infrared and here is the example of the emission and excitation spectra of a fluorophore in this case is alexa 555 that we are representing so the very first peak you see is representing the uh, absorption spectra profile and which is shown in a with the yellow liner uh, yellow line so that means this particular for alexa 564 absorbs light with a wavelength of uh, which start from 450 to 600 nanometer but the absorption peaks at 550 that's why it is called by uh, alexa 4555 but it can be excited uh, and it can absorb light in a very um, wide range similarly after it reverts back to the uh, ground stage getting the absorbing the excitation light it emits the light uh, in a longer wavelength which ranges from 500 to 700 nanometer as you can see in the second graph which is uh, shown in the red uh, red line and the difference and as you can see it peaks around uh, 582 and the difference between these two peaks where the, there is absorption maxima and the emission maxima this is called the stoke shift so how in the previous uh, graph which we showed how the excitation and the emission filter that are used to generate a fluorescent image so here is the configuration which is shown a filter uh, assembly so the filter assembly is as as i mentioned in our previous module also filter assembly contains three important component dichroic mirror uh, excitation filter and the emission filter and as you can see in the picture on the very right you can see the light source that is coming uh, light from the source that is coming is yellow or the complete uh, light the white light which has all the spectra all all the wavelength that we want but it 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 experiences the excitation filter which removes all other wavelength except the green in this case would let in in now the die it will hit the dichroic mirror and uh, will reflect or deflect the light to the specimen once the specimen is illuminated with this green light now the excitation uh, light will come back in the form of emission emitted light from the sample which will go back and dichroic mirror will allow it to go back and then it will encounter the emission filter now the emission filter again will allow specific wavelength to pass through and that emission light is captured either by your by the eyes or by the camera and if it has to shown in this uh, in, in a graph form we see that dichroic mirror as you can see in this case will allow all the wavelength to get in whichever it encounters but because the uh, emission spectra because the excitation spectra uh, excitation filter only allowed a specific wavelength to get in and the emission spectra also uh, represent the amount of light that is allowed to get in uh, is represented in here so uh, and this this is the combination of filter configuration that is used to specific to to excite our sample with specific wavelength as well as to capture the specific wavelength that is emitting out from the sample as mentioned in the previous module as well the light source is different uh, there are different light source that are available for illuminating the sample and for the fluorescent microscopy there are a range of these uh, lamps whether it's mercury lamps xeon lamps metal halide lamps or now the led light source which are available and which produce a range of white light uh, produce a uh, white light with range of uh, uh, wavelengths with different intensity for example the very cheapest and the oldest source is mercury arc lamp that lamp has all the possible wavelength with a different intensity as you can see they are very high in terms of intensity uh, on the other end xeon lamp has uh, more in far have higher intensity of uh, wavelength at uh, more than 800 uh, nanometer and the most commonly used and most effectively used uh, source for the in, uh, light source in, uh, in fluorescent microscope is metal halide lamps which have relatively constant 
uh, intensity of signal in across the wavelength as you can see in this and if it is compared with mercury metal halide is very very comparable as you can see the overlay between metal halide and a mercury wavelength so it's a very very um, most reliable and a uh, cheap substitute for the mercury lamp and in the end the nowadays the availability of led light source there are very various advantages associated with led lights first as you can see the intensity in for all the led light source that are at the wavelength that are available is relatively very constant also compared to the metal halide which provides all the spectra in one go led can be coupled with filter wheels uh, and the, which will allow only specific wavelength to get to strike the sample or to allow to pass through uh, so in this case we don't need the excitation filter assembly only the emission fi emission uh, filter assembly is required because instead of um, using the filter assembly on the microscope we are just we just having additional filter wheel on the led light source which automatically cuts uh, which automatically eliminates rest of the undesired wavelength and let only specific wavelength to uh, eliminate or excite the samples so the fluorescent image uh, fluorescent based microscopy uh, are three of uh, three of kind one is wide field microscopy and as the name suggests it means a wider area is captured in this confocal microscope on the other end has very focused uh, illumination by because which is guided by a laser and then also uses a pinhole to get a very sharper image and third is two photon uh, microscopy in which mm, uh, just two photons are used to amplify uh, to excite a signal and uh, get an image one of the application of uh, fluorescence based imaging is FRET uh, fluorescent resonance energy transfer and as the name suggests there is a transfer of energy and as I mentioned earlier also that fluorescence based imaging depends upon the um, excitation of our fluorophore and it returning into the ground stage and as you can see in this picture if there is no fret then you follow the very similar pattern where you have excitation and the emission but it is also possible if two molecules are in very close proximity which is uh, between 1 to 10 nanometer so what happens in that case one fluorophore which is excited and while it is emitting in longer wavelength and that wavelength can be utilized by the other uh, fluorophore which can get excited in that long wavelength can excite and also results in a, mm, a subsequent activation of a fluorophore which can be captured by a microscope so in this method what we are trying to understand if and especially that is used to understand whether two molecules are in close proximity or not uh, and if they are what will happen in this case we excite one uh, fluorophore which for which we know the kind of wavelength we need but the other other fluorophore mm, uh, is not getting excited by the, that wavelength but if they are in close proximity this fluorophore gets excited and resulting uh, emission wavelength will be utilized by this other fluorophore to get excited and resulting in a fluorescence signal so this technology has been uh, extensively or been used by cell biologists to understand whether two proteins are in close proximity or not or they are interacting or not here is again a, a pictorial depiction of uh, a standard fluorescent microscope uh, which is uh, also discussed in previous module again you can see in the uh, you have uh, a reverse l shape frame through which on which this entire system is kept we have the light source which could be mercury lamp metal halide or led light source through which the light is generated and um, given it to the dichroic mirror before that it passes through the excitation filter but in terms of LED we don't have uh, as I mentioned in previous slide in the case of LED instead of having the excitation filter on the filter assembly we have uh, uh, excitation uh, filter or filter wheel just after the uh, LED source which allows only that specific wavelength to get in now the light hits the dichroic mirror and then goes and hits the sample once the sample is excited and emits that signal it comes back dichroic mirror allows it to pass it back and when and hits the emission filter which allows only specific wavelength to come back and that emitted signal can be visualized by your eyes through eyepiece 
or can be taken to the camera for capturing the image confocal microscopy so we discussed about the white field microscopy where the entire sample is eliminated uh, in compared to that in confocal microscopy uh, instead of entire sample uh, confocal only eliminates a with a specific wavelength to very smaller section of the uh, sample as, as you can see in this picture on the focal plane the laser is used which hits the dichroic mirror and via objective lens it only uh, eliminates a very specific section that we are looking at and thereby only um, thereby it removes all the autofluorescence or the background uh, si signal that is coming from the sample is reduced thereafter the signal which is emitted from the sample is going back through a pinhole now this pinhole further uh, removes any out of focus light as well as any autofluorescence that is that is uh, coming from the sample and create, which is captured by a camera or seen under a um, through the naked eye uh, on a, on, a t on a computer screen we get a very very sharper image and a better image so the image will have a better lateral as well as a vertical resolution in confocal compared to the the wide field microscopy and here as you can see in this schematic again we're showing how the uh, point spread function or the the sp uh, specimen illumination differs in both the cases in wide field microscopy we have we, we are illuminating a very large section as you can see the the specimen kept is a glass slip but the a wider area is uh, illuminated compared to the a very specific point in the lasers of confocal microscopy and the resulting image from both of these microscopies are like this the same three images are viewed by um, by wide field microscopy as well as confocal microscopy and as you can see in the very first panel all the three you see that the images are quality is good but the resolution is not that great you still see a blurry image in all the three cases but in confocal we see a better resolution and much more clarity in terms of is the organization that we are seeing in in all the cases therefore confocal uh, provides a better uh, resolution but in white field microscopy nowadays uh, is coupled with deconvolution method so what happens in this case all the out of focus light which is creating this blur image in the white field is removed and the sample is concentrated or the signal is concentrated back to its point of origin and we get a quality which is equivalent to the confocal microscopy two photon microscopy uh, in two photon microscopy uh, as instead of fluorophore getting excited with a with a, a uh, range of or the uh, bombarded with the large number of photon here the fluorophore is excited using only two low energy photons and photons are concentrated in a specific region so that we have higher specificity and the low background signal in this case the major advantages associated with this microscopy is that as the longer wavelength is used for excitation it gives us a better resolution it gives us a better penetration particularly samples which are thicker and thereby we get a better uh, resolution in vertical uh, vertical resolution uh, resolutions the number of photon that are used for excitations are also very low which means there is a low toxicity low photo bleaching and sample uh, is not getting affected and we can concentrate we can uh, image it for a longer period of time third and most important is that the background signal is very low because number of uh, photon that are used for excitations are not a huge number therefore the likely of getting background signal is very low and third it does not require a pinhole uh, to to image it back as simple is because our sample is excited in a specific plane so we know where the sample the signal is coming from so we can actually track it it's it's a special and uh, uh, localization that's why we get the uh, get the higher resolution so two photon microscopy provides a very very good resolution compared to white field and confocal however it is important that the fluorophore that we are using is of as a better intensity and as a higher intensity and as a heavy duty cycle in a sense it, it can be imaged for a longer duration of time as well here is the schematic of how a two photon based microscopy is used and if you remember the earlier picture uh, which we showed 
where we have a single uh, where we have uh, the the, the our, our for our sample is getting excited and reaching from ground state to excited state in one go but in this case we use low energy wavelength or the low longer wavelength photons to excite it and each photon gives half of the energy that is required it for it to move from ground stage to the excited stage and uh, it this stepwise uh, excitation is done by using the laser and again once it reaches to the excited state comes back to ground state emitting the emitting the the longer wavelength the rest of the principle is same but here as you can see in this specimen also showing we have specimen is thicker focal plane can be um, way below focal focal plane and the signal distribution can be separated by in, in a thick sample but because we know where exactly we are getting we, we are exciting so we can exactly figure out where the signal is coming from total internal reflection for fluorescent microscopy now this is the latest and the uh, high-end microscopy which is used uh, to generate a high resolution image and this is particularly used for the imaging of the membranes the principle it exploits is based upon the SNOM which we discussed in previous uh, module and so actually it's again creates the evanescence wave which are nothing but the electromagnetic wave but they do not travel so within that area within the sample if the evanescence wave is generated we get the light which are uh, and then we get the signal coming from the sample depending upon its interaction with the with the waves and would help us to generate a better quality image so the excitation beam of the light from the laser is sent to the specimen uh, through a very high objective lens they also use prism but uh, prism has several disadvantages uh, but once the uh, light is sent through the objective lens it is sent through a specific angle so resulting in a uh, which results in a total internal reflection or the evanescence wave uh, that is created between sample and the cover slip and the longer it stays in there it gives us better information about the sample uh, structure one of the major advantage of turf is that it exhibits very high resolution and very high signal to noise ratio and signal to noise ratio is very important in microscopy as uh, represents that compared to the background how much actual signal that we are getting so here is example of it in a wide field microscopy the signal to noise ratio is almost one or one one fold higher or 1.3 to 2 while in the turf microscopy we can get a signal to noise ratio up to 3.5 and as you can see the background versus the the signal and the darker background with a whiter signal means that you have lower background and more signal that's why you have higher signal to noise ratio compared to the uh, white field microscopy where we have a very bright image and also have a brighter dot in it that uh, represents the uh, low SN low signal to noise ratio and as I mentioned earlier also turf has an application in in uh, for thicker sample where we want to see uh, we want to visualize endocytosis exocytosis as well as looking at the trafficking of protein within the within the cells also it has application in in determining the interaction between cells and cell and uh, different kind of cells application of fluorescent microscopy one of the uh, there are few advantages uh, and a few application which are very commonly used for uh, microscopy fluorescent based microscopies are FRET which is fluorescent resonance energy transfer FLIM fluorescent lifetime imaging microscopy as well as the FRAP which is fluorescent recovery after photo bleaching method FRET so FRET is a uh, method as I showed in the previous uh, slide as well that you that in which one fluorophore act as a donor while the other fluorophore act as a, uh, a receptor thereby that which is important to uh, identify whether two molecules are in close proximity that's why they can transfer and get the signal from the other other uh, fluorophore and the crucial fact is that it requires uh, it should both of them should be in very close proximity almost forester radius that is 1 to 10 nanometer and 
uh, the uh, the for the transfer to be very efficient the acceptor and owner should be in same orientation and the application of fret is in receptor like an interaction um, they are also used in uh, nucleic acid hybridization as well as in looking at the transport of liquid lipid across the membrane or within the cell fluorescence lifetime imaging uh, microscopy flim uh, this application is is based upon the delay that we see uh, in the excitation and emission of uh, the fluorophore and each fluorophore has a unique natural life um, that can be manipulated uh, by uh, that actually get affected by the cytological conditions such as iron concentration pH uh, oxygen concentration within the cell and protein protein interaction so this particular capability or the potential of uh, fluorophore is exploited in terms of uh, understanding how the proteins how the proteins are uh, moving and dynamic within the cells uh, for example ras cam and ras in 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 neurons as well as it is used in multi photon tomography to detect intradermal cancer also the fluorescent recovery after photo bleaching is very uh, is a method which is commonly used to understand whether how quickly the signal is restored after the photo bleaching this particular method is used to understand how efficiently the protein is getting folded within the cell and also it has been used uh, to understand how quickly a site is been getting uh, repaired during the uh, once the dna damage is encountered uh, so a dna binding protein uh, uh, protein which binds to the dna damage site are tagged with fluorescent tag so once the dna damage is induced the color the fluoro the protein tag with the fluorophore will come and recruit in that place when the repair is over the fluorescent signal will disappear so this method is used to uh, determine the dynamics of how protein is efficient is is getting recruited and getting uh, re abolished from the place so in this picture as you can see uh, and in the slide b that area was bleached and um in in the section c and in section d we see the complete recovery of the signal um so this can be used to understand the dynamics of uh, protein folding and its uh, uh, and uh, protein folding and its restoration as well so by the end of this module i hope um, um students have learned about the fluorescent based imaging methods and the microscopy that has been done using fluorescent based uh, fluorophores uh, wide field microscopy confocal microscopy two photon microscopy as well as the applications of these techniques in fret frap as well as in ter so in wide field as i also already mentioned that wide field and confocal differs in terms uh, the way the sample is exposed in wide field the entire sample is been exposed to the fluorescent light so uh, the the entire sample is illuminated on the other hand in confocal we have very very um, precision very very precise activation of fluorophore in a specific location and also by using the pinhole we are also getting rid of every uh, any any background light so compared to the white field confocal produces a very very high um, resolution image two photon on the hand, other hand is a, a very uh, technique which allows much more specific as well as higher resolution because in this the fluorophore is excited with just two photons and in combination of these ones they produce a better resolution compared to confocal and wide field microscopy and this is very important in terms of uh, uh, visualizing samples which are thicker and your signal is localized uh, within that thick sample so you have better uh, deep tissue imaging in this also the application of fret which is very important in terms of understanding whether two molecules are in very close proximity because one used as a donor another one as an acceptor based upon their excitation and emission spectra uh, another one is frap frap is a technique which is very well used nowadays to understand how uh, the protein uh, is getting assembled what are uh, what is the dynamics of that particular to get refolded again and also is used in terms in understanding how dna is getting repaired also there is one of the application of this uh, technology is to understand how quickly a dna damage is repaired by looking at the appearance and the disappearance of um, a specific protein which are tagged with a, a fluorescent protein and turf is the is the 
uh, is a very um, a very crucial technique which has been used to understand the membrane dynamics and which is based upon evanescence waves uh, system and it allows it allows a researcher to un better understand how protein protein interaction that is happening on the membrane as well as the uh, overall structure of the membrane so fluorescent microscopy has a range of applications and range of capabilities that allows researchers to understand or address specific biological questions thank you